Hello everybody, this is Anne and welcome back to my podcast. Today is Sunday, March 17th, 2019. I hope everybody is doing well. Um, it is a beautiful spring day here in northern New Mexico. We've got the sun out and not very windy today. Um, so yeah, it's really nice. I'm planning on spending some time outside this afternoon, so thought I would get my podcast done this morning. If you are a new viewer, welcome. Um, I hope you find reason to come back and visit with me at some other point in the future. And if you're a returning viewer, uh, welcome and thank you for tuning in with me yet again. I uh, wanted to just take a moment to say that um, I've had a lot of thoughts I've been sending out into the universe this past week. Um, if you're somebody here in the United States who's in the Med Midwest and is affected by the flooding, um, I know Nebraska and Illinois, um, I have friends, um, friends or friends of friends in both of those places. I know that they have been hit pretty hard, so keep safe and, you know, be smart. Just, that's probably good advice for many things in this world. And um, of course, if you are someone in New Zealand who was affected by the shootings, I am just sending all kinds of good thoughts towards you. This is a crazy world in which we live. And, you know, if you can just take 30 extra seconds to be kind to someone else, I think that goes a long way. So, um, anyway thinking of lots of folks this week and sending as much positive energy as I can out into the universe in the hopes that our collectiveness of doing that will make a difference someday. Um, okay, let's kind of move on. Uh, lots to talk about today as usual. Um, I'm gonna jump right up front and do spinning first today. I still do not have anything to show you, although I have started doing some spinning again. Um, my bathroom is still not finished. I'm, I'm hoping for Wednesday. Uh, we've still got shower doors to put up. We, the contractor, still needs to put my shower doors up. I finally have them, however, so that's at least a step in the right direction. The box looks a little beat up, but you know what? I'm not opening it till he gets here because yeah, I want him to hook up the other thing under the sink that needs to be hooked up so I can at least, you know, brush my teeth and stuff in there. So anyway, um, that did mean, however, that I moved the dresser and portions of the bedstead that were leaning up against space in the room that I spin in. So I have done some spinning. Not enough to show you anything because literally it's been, I think, like a total of 30 minutes. So not worth mentioning. Let's move on to knitting then. Um, I have returned from the Yarn Guys retreat in Iowa, which was a ton of fun. If you attended and um, are watching, thank you for coming out. Um, it was really nice to get to meet some folks that um, Jeff and Dennis had mentioned, you know, in connection with their shop, but I had not had an opportunity to meet in person. Um, so that was wonderful. My fellow teacher and I, I think, had a great time. I think Varian would agree with me. Um, yeah, so a success. Uh, it was cold in Iowa. I, it, was, it was cold. Not that we did that much outside, but it was cold. Um, so I am done with that travel and glad to be home from that. Um, I have gotten my classes picked up. I've gotten two classes picked up for Stitches Midwest which is, uh, I think it's August 1st through the 4th. I think that's right, it's the first weekend in August, which is just outside Chicago. Uh, I am teaching my Fair Isle Color Inspiration class, and I am teaching a new class, uh, new to stitches anyway. I taught it actually at the retreat, which is top-down yoke sweaters, uh, construction, fit, customizing, all that good stuff. Uh, they're both six-hour classes, so they're they're in, intense in the sense that you have six hours of information coming at you, um, but they do split them up, which is nice. Uh, let's see, I think the yoke class is 
Thursday afternoon and Friday morning. And the Fair Isle class is Saturday. Yeah, it's Saturday morning and then Saturday after lunch. So we do that class all in one day. Um, so I'm excited about going to that. If you are local or not local but coming in, um, please check out all of the great classes that Stitches offers. There's pretty much something for everybody. I will include a link down below. Um, they have the longer classes. They have some market sessions that are an hour or 30 minutes uh, that are kind of fun to take if you just need like a little refresher or want to brush up on a specific skill. Um, and of course the market place uh, is open Thursday night through Sunday and I will be there in the Yarn Guys booth with Willy Wonka Fibers. Um, okay, so I think that's kind of all of the housekeeping e stuff. Um, next up, what have I been working on? I finally finished my striped socks. They have not been blocked but they are done and here they are. Um, these are basically plain vanilla socks. They have a one by one rib. I use the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which I did in a little mini skein I had of my Rhiannon sock in Grey Goose, which I think, even though it's not the same gray, it's close enough. Um, just a usual wide rounded toe. So these are self striping and I knit these as part of my uh, literary themed knit along challenge, craft along challenge, you can spin or crochet or weave or knit uh, that I'm hosting in the Wooly Wonka group on Ravelry. The original uh, yarn is from Night Owl Fibers. She is, she actually has her own store now. I think when I bought this she was on Etsy. Yeah, she was still on Etsy. Um, but this is the colorway Sherlock Holmes and I love it. I think it's just it's fun. I think it would go with khakis. I think it would go with jeans. I think it would go with like a dark, dark denim. Pretty much everything I own. So yeah, those were super fun. Um, I will mention that next quarter, so April, May, and June, uh, we'll be hosting a fandom themed knit along. So anything that you can tie to one of the popular fandoms. And so there is some overlap because, I mean, Harry Potter is a literary themed thing, but I think it also qualifies as fandom, as does Sherlock Holmes. Um, probably Jane Austen would fit in there too. But you could also do things like Guardians of the Galaxy or any of the Marvel Universe or Star Trek or... Um, what else did I, oh, Doctor Who. There's lots and lots of things that are out there that are fandom themed. Um, so I put together a little bundle that is in the Willy Wonka Fibers group uh, that um, highlights some patterns. I mean, there's oodles out there, so this is by no means a comprehensive bundle, um, but linked to a bunch of different things there. And then I've also started a chat thread for that uh, in case people who are planners or just want to look through and see what there is, um, I want to go and take a look at that thread, which already has some discussion in it. Um, Nicole, who is Nicole S. on Ravelry, is a group member, and she knits socks like crazy. Um, she knits beautiful, beautiful pieces, um, like little works of art. They're just gorgeous. So she had also tossed out an, another bundle in the sock knitting group that she's in uh, on Ravelry. Sock Knitters Anonymous, I think it is. Um, anyway, they have a fandom bundle page for socks, just socks. Um, and I was telling Kim, hey Kim, um, that I was very, very tempted to put another pair of socks on the needles because there are some amazing ones in there. They are interesting and fun and the Bellatrix socks alone, I would knit in a heartbeat. They're super fun. They're great for like a bright multicolored yarn. Um, yeah, I probably will delve into that, but right now I am working on a deadline sample knit for, um, a garment and it's on size twos with fingering weight yarn to fit a guy. So I have to focus on that, unfortunately, right now. 
So maybe once I get that done, then I can focus on something else. But for right now, that's really going to be my knitting focus now that I have those socks done. Um, I did also spend some time working on my Cascadas Tea, which is a pattern by Susanna IC. As always, I will link to any patterns um, that I mention here uh, down below uh, on Ravelry, so you can take a look at those, and if you love them, you can make them yourself. Uh, so this is part of my Make 9 uh, challenge for 2019. So this is a yoke-shaped um, it's a short sleeved tee and last time I showed this to you I had the yoke done and I had just started on the body so some plain knitting has gotten me this far and I'm about halfway through the body so the good news is is once the body is finished I think there's only like eight or ten rounds to knit the sleeves because they're short sleeves so I'm knitting this in silky wool from Elizabeth Levold and it was just, it's deep stash that I've had forever and ever and ever. So happy to be using it up. Um, not sure how much progress I will make on this, but it is still a work in progress. So I will work on it at some point. If I need like a really easy, no think knit, that will be the one that I pick up. Okay. So let us move on to books. Um, I have read a lot in the last two weeks, y'all. Um, just one thing that happens for good or for bad when I go to teach um, at any event is I'm tired, I'm tired at night. And you know, stocking at socks are all very well and good to work on, but sometimes like I don't even have the brain power to haul the knitting out and so books it is. So uh, a lot of these are being driven by extra credit or other assignments in the School of Magical Stitching and Literature on Facebook, which I've talked about before. Um, but let's just run down the list. So the first thing I finished was one I had just started, um, Written in Red by Anne Bishop. This is a sort of retelling of the Red Riding Hood story, but... It's definitely fantasy. It has shape, shape, shape shifters in it, not just wolves, but other creatures. And um, it has a bit of a sort of dystopian feel to it. Um, the main premise is that the shape shifters are, are now the ones in charge of the world. They control water supply, they control land, um, they have sort of assigned, if you will, sort of enclaves where humans can live and go about their daily lives. And then there are areas that are kind of on the boundary of the shapeshifters and the humans' worlds where they have some interaction. And one of these uh, sort of mid middle of the road places has um, is right next to a shapeshifter compound and they have some shops and stores and things like that um, and into this comes our heroine who uh, is named Meg and she is on the run from a secret past and she applies for a job working as basically the human liaison between the shapeshifters and the other human population. Um, she is also kind of their male, male clerk because the shapeshifters don't really go out to shop. They pretty much get everything shipped in. So, um, so she becomes assimilated into the community and then her past kind of starts catching up with her. Um, I think it's probably young adult. It doesn't have, it has some violence. It doesn't really have anything else that I would say is questionable in it. Um, it's a really good storyline and I couldn't put it down. I basically raced through it and loved it. I would say four and a half stars simply because it's maybe not everybody's cup of tea, but I, I really enjoyed it. And if you like that kind of young adult fantasy, uh, then you would probably like it too. It is the first in a series. There are other books in that series. So um, stuff, to, stuff to continue on with if you like the characters and you like the author. 
Um, the next book I read was for the extra credit uh, prompt for March and April, which was to read a book which had to be over 400 pages uh, that has an animal on the cover. So I read a book called The Wonderling by Mira Bartok. Again, links down below to Goodreads so you can read more of the synopsis. Um, this book was recommended to me by a, a good friend, Victoria, and it is a sweet, sweet, lovely little book. Um, if you read to your kids, Sarah, at Stitch and Mommy, I don't know, this book might even be a little bit young for your boys if they're already doing Lord of the Rings, but um, the story is, is sweet. It's about a creature, this little creature who's half human, half fox. He uh, has been growing up in a really horrible kind of Lemony Snicket-ish orphanage. And he is number 13 at the orphanage. He's just given a number, he has no name. So he, he meets a little creature who is a wingless bird. She actually kind of looks like a kiwi, uh, like the bird kiwi, not the fruit kiwi. Um, and she, she befriends him and the two of them um, become close friends and they're kind of each other's defense against all the horrible mean things that go on at this orphanage. Um, she gives him a name. She names him Arthur after King Arthur and the two of them plot an escape from the evil grumpy woman who owns the orphanage um, and all of her minions. Um, so once they break out of the orphanage they then have adventures in some of the local towns um, there's a little bit of like Oliver Twist thrown into the story. I mean, it's kind of hard to without, you know, it's an, it's a little orphan boy who has to go find his way in the world and he falls in with a gang of thieves. Um, so yeah, it, it's a very, it's not even what I would consider young adult. Um, it's long, it's 400 pages, but it's really much more of a children's book in the sense that there's really not violence to speak of there's not bad language there's no sex whatsoever um, there he meets lots of magical fantastical creatures um, and in the end he kind of finds his true spirit and his his swan family as my friend Marjean would call it um, the family you were meant to have but maybe didn't have as, as a little one so a lovely sweet read um, good story like I said I think it would be a great one to read with your kids there's lots of positive things in it about finding out who you are and being brave and making the best of situations and keeping a positive attitude so good one there um, I also just yesterday finished reading Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban for uh, our March April homework I listened to that on audiobook so really enjoyed that and we'll probably do the other reads uh, in the rest of the Harry Potter series for the school homework uh, as audiobooks because I, I really liked having that in my ear um, so I don't think I need to really review that if you haven't read Harry Potter you should go read it <laughs> and if you have then you already know what I'm talking about so all good. Um, the next thing that I read was a book called The Crossing Places. This was for the extra credit prompt, um, a book that has a mystery or searching for something is integral to the story. Uh, the author's name is Ellie Griffiths and this is a mystery set uh, in the UK. Um, trying to think, there's a lot of similar authors. They're very, it, the books are dark. They're, they've got a lot of sort of creepy things going on in them, not in terms of like ghosts, but just there's people out there who are not very nice. Uh, this is one of those books, but it is focused about, the main character is a sort of middle-aged, slightly overweight archeologist who doesn't have a lot of social skills, but she lives at the edge of this marsh and they have done dig excavations there and they have found uh, Neolithic uh, markings. They have found ne Neolithic um, burials, like sacrificial burials. And 
the book hinges on this little girl who's lost who they think they've found out on the marsh it turns out to actually be another neolithic burial but as the story unfolds and the little girl is not found the archaeologist is called on by the police to investigate some other kind of old bones that they've found and um, she and the main detective inspector assigned to this case wind up developing a slightly bumpy relationship um, but that carries throughout the book um, yeah so I really enjoyed this book I'm not sure I would read more in the series I think it's off to a good start I think if you like that kind of murder mystery you will like this book that sort of British um, uh, ancient history tied into the present kind of um, mystery so, I mean, I enjoyed it. I read it. I zipped through it. Um, it's not a tough read at all. Um, it's, it's part of a series, and I think Melanie over at Libby's Lot is, has just finished the second one as well that she talked about in her most recent video, if you watch her. Um, so, yeah. I mean, good for what it was. I enjoyed it. Next book. Told you there was a lot book called Iron and Magic, and the author of this is Ilona Andrews. Um, she is the author of the Kate Daniels series, which is probably better known, that begins with Magic Bites and follows Kate Daniels through her adventures. Uh, this is a book written in the same universe, but not focused on Kate Daniels, although she does, that, that character comes up briefly in the book like you understand who she is but you can definitely read this as a standalone this is a relatively new book it introduces us to two new characters in this world um hugh who is um, he's a military commander but he also commands some magic he is the head of the iron dogs which is sort of the main mages uh thug force, if you will. He has been kicked out. He is down on his luck. The book opens with him drink, like completely drunk in a tavern. Uh, the other character in this is, I don't know if I'll say this right, Ilana, I think. And she is known as the White Lady to her people. She has a castle that's kind of on the edge of... Um, the edge of civilization, I guess I would call it. Civilization is a little questionable in this, these series. Um, what has happened is there's basically been a shift where um, magic has come back and it has starting, started to break down technology. And so when the magic is in force, um, if you are a magician, you have crazy powers and you can do all the things that your magic allows you to do. And when the magic is off and tech is back on your magic either doesn't work at all or it's very uh, subdued and so that's the time you run your bulldozer because it doesn't work the bulldozers and computers and phones and things like that don't work when the magic is running so it shifts back and forth between kind of this decimated tech world that we probably know of as the 21st century and a time where magic reigns and um, Ilana is trying to figure out a way to protect her people from the onslaught of the mage who's still in control based out of Atlanta. Um, and Hugh is looking for a way to kind of redeem himself. And so they enter into this marriage of convenience where he brings the iron dogs and retrains them, kind of gets them back up to speed to protect her castle and she agrees to basically feed them and pay for their equipment which he had no money to do. Lots of epic battles. There's all kinds of weird and interesting creatures in these. Um, there's shapeshifters again in this. Um, there's a great, one of the things Ilona Andrews writes and this is a husband wife team who write together under that pen name. Um, they do a great job of creating characters who have a lot of tension of some kind between them. In a lot of cases, it starts out as one kind of tension and becomes sexual tension, but um, 
they just do a really good job of kind of witty banner and back and forthing and then they also have a great approach to figuring out how to describe like the epic battles and fights to the finish and they do a wonderful job of character and world building so if you haven't checked out their books i i highly recommend them i've also read the magic bites series i think i've read all but the last one and I've also re read another book that features Kate Daniels' love interest, if you will, that's a standalone prequel kind of thing. So, um, new, good, really enjoyed it. Uh, Mind Candy, absolutely. <laughs> Still fun to read, that too. The book I'm currently reading is a book called The Last Magician, and this is by Lisa Maxwell. Um, so this book has a little bit, well, it's focused on time travel. Um, our main character jumps from present day New York back into um, 20th century, early 20th century New York, so like 1900, 1910. And she is somebody who can control magic. Um, she has a mentor in contemporary the contemporary world and he is basically training her to jump back through time to collect um, these sort of five pieces that are touchstones that have some grander plan behind them, which she's not aware of. She knows that there's a grander plan. She just doesn't know what it is. So she's kind of doing this stuff at the bidding of her mentor and she makes the jump back to retrieve one of the five things she's looking for and she gets stuck. So there's like three different stories that are happening and it's kind of unfolding in little bits and pieces over each of the time jump sections like it opens in one era we go to contemporary she jumps back to another era we do a little contemporary right now we're in the past um and i'm maybe a third of the way through it so we'll let you know how that is but um that's also for one of the extra credit prompts so enjoying that and then I just downloaded, but have not yet started, the reread task, uh, which is a book that I decided to read because I want to read the other ones following it in the series for a couple other uh, extra credit prompts. So that is the book Green Rider uh, by Kristen England. If you haven't read it, it is very good. It has a horse in it, but that's not just why I'm recommending it, although I love the horse in this book. Um, so anyway, I will start listening to that. I have it as an audiobook, so that will be something I chip chip my way through um, going along. So Green Rider. I will talk more about that when I'm done it. All right, let's move on to stitching. I'm trying something a little bit new this time because there's so much stuff going on in magical stitching with the homework and then the extra credit and then the stuff that I'm doing for the ultimate challenge that... I was worried and fairly sure that I was forgetting to talk about stuff in the two weeks in between when I last talked to you and when I'm talking to you now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to insert a set of vlog clips that I took for the last two weeks worth of homework. So um, let's see, do I have the dates? It's the last two weeks worth of homework. So homework comes out on Mondays, so there's two batches worth, and each little clip will show you what I worked on and just very high level talk about what the prompts are. So um, hang tight, and I will be back as soon as you guys watch what happened in the future. I will be back in the present. Hey guys, this is Anne, and this is my homework for year three, week two, I think it is, for Magical Stitches. Um, this set of things were items that we needed to shop in Diagon Alley for. Uh, so the pieces that I picked, let me show you what this one's going to look like when it's done. This is the Prairie Schoolers When Witches Go Riding. So that's the finished piece. And I worked on my version, which is on a hand-dyed uh, 28 count linen using hand-dyed silks, both by me. Um, I chose this because of the little owl right there. Um, and I put in the 250 stitches. I finished this little 
branch and his tail and then I came down and got most of the border finished. So that was my first homework that I finished this week. Next up, I decided to go over to the um, shop that caters to wizard clothing where the robes are. And I decided to work on the Drawn Threads Welcome Winter because there's this cute little um, sort of Hogwarts stripe type scarf in it. Although we didn't have to work on the thing specifically, but um, I decided I was going to put some stitches in on this one. So let me show you that. So I had just started the W, um, this section of the W. So I finished the W completely, the E completely, and I started on the L, and that was my 250 stitches for this task. And then finally, I decided to head on over to the bookstore to pick up my class books for third year. And I put in 250 stitches here to finish this book. And then I came up here and worked on this um, 100 square section. And this is a stitching shelf from Heaven and Earth Designs with artwork by Amy Stewart. So that is where I am on that one. And that finished up my weekly homework. I'm gonna tackle some extra credit projects next, but I will show you those in the rest of the video. Bye for now. Hello everybody, this is Anne, and I'm back with another little vlog clip to talk about the uh, current week's homework for School of Magical Stitches and Literature. Uh, we are in year three, and this week's homework, which started March 10th, uh, was to stitch 300 stitches in brown to um, represent the chocolate that Harry eats after he's been attacked by the Dementors or interacts with the Dementors. And then the second piece is to work with a creature, a project with a creature that has claws or talons. So for both of those projects, I opted to go with When Witches Go Riding. Uh, this is a Prairie Schooler piece, and I'm working on this one right here. And you can see down here in the bottom, there's a ton of brown. And you can see there's also an owl in this piece. And since an owl has talons, I just thought I'd go ahead and put stitches in. Now we didn't need to work on the thing that has talons itself. So here is what I did. Um, I came down here into this bottom section and I worked a whole bunch of the brown. Uh, got my 300 stitches on that. And then once I completed that, I finished the little bit of, I had a little bit of thread left in my, in my needle. So I finished the brown there. I went back and I put in a few stitches to finish up this border here and added uh, the beginnings of the fence line. I finished this jack-o'-lantern. Um, I put the owl's beak in because I had orange on my needle and um, there was like four stitches right here that needed to be done in orange as well. So I completed those two. So in total, 600 stitches added to this project. Super happy that I got yet another chance to work on this. This is not a focus piece. Um, it's not one of my stitch nine and not one that I was looking for any kind of specific progress on, but uh, super, super happy with how much I'm getting done this year on this one. Um, I finished the moon. I've added a lot more of the words, the owl, this branch, um, brought the border down with some other homework. Um, and of course added all this down here in the bottom, which is all new. So happy with this. Um, it'll go away till next time I have a reason to haul it out and work on it, probably for homework. Um, but yeah, let's see. Oh, before I forget, so it is a 28 count linen hand dyed by me, and I'm using one strand of floss over two. Uh, it's also hand dyed by me. Um, it's a silk floss that uh, I dyed a while back. So using that from Stash to work this one up. So that's gonna do me for the weekly homework up updates for 
this podcast and I will return you back to me in the present. Bye for now. Okay, so I'm back and hopefully you guys enjoyed those little clips. I think I will probably do that going forward. It's just so much easier for me to keep track of, but you know, if anybody has any huge issues with it, let me know. You can leave me a comment down below. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what else has been going on for other things I've been working on. Um, I'm going to talk about some um, stash acquisitions, some stuff that showed up, I guess, um, first. And then I'm going to talk about the last couple of projects that I didn't talk about um, in the vlog. So first is I got the March um, installment for the uh, Country Christmas Ornament Club from Annie B's. You guys saw my finish for February last time. I have not started this, but this has this has arrived. Um, not sure if I will start this this month or if I will save this to April. I haven't decided yet. I may I may work on it next week, but part of it will be what the homework is. Um, and then the other thing that I got, which isn't very exciting, but I'm showing it to you to keep myself on the straight and narrow for Stitch from Stash is I ordered two skeins of Gentle Arts chalk because I'm using that for all of the white in these and there's a lot of white, as particularly in this one. I wasn't going to be able to get it finished with what I have, so um, just went ahead and ordered two skeins. I've been doing pretty good with my Stitch from Stash budget. Um, this is the first purchase I've made this year, even though there were a bunch of things from market that I was interested in. I did not get them. I was very good and sat on my hands because um, I'm kind of saving up for um, a birthday present, but I will talk about that at some other point in time. Um, I also did a trade with Becky over at Socks for Mom. I sent her some yarn. She sent me a project bag. And you guys, this is Harry Potter themed. That's right. Becky's bags are awesome. They're the ones with the vinyl front and then this great uh, newspaper clipping fabric that she used for the lining. And they all come with a clip to attach your scissors to or attach, um, if you use like the yarn cards, you can attach that here. Um, yeah, love it. Um, I'm actually going to put a pro my Stargazer project in that and I will show you Stargazer Gazer here momentarily. Um, let's see. Let me talk about the one other project that I put some more work into um, outside of homework that you guys have not seen, but I'm working on this for extra credit and I will work on this for quite a a few of the other extra credit things this month. So this is my village of Hawk Run Hollow, which I'm sure everybody has, well not everybody, but I'm sure a lot of you have seen. So uh, that is what it will look like when it's finished. I am working this on a 22 count um, hard hanger and it is in the colorway Legacy from Picture This Plus. So uh, I have not finished this block yet. That is on my to-do list for some extra credit stitching upcoming. So hopefully I can get that done because I would love to have the credit for it. I'm taking stitch from stash credit for each block. Um, I did use it, however, to work on the frames um, extra credit prompt. And then I have started on the middle block, uh, which I guess is block five here because one of the extra credit prompts was to work on a project on one of the challenges that you did not complete. So I actually didn't join the group at the first of the year. I joined it in the middle of January and the week that I joined, I think I got sorted on like Thursday. And so the only thing I had time to do was the specific week homework, but the challenge that week was to put 300 stitches, I believe it's 300 stitches in, in your two house colors. So I'm in Slytherin, so it would be green and silver. So I'm gonna put, all of this is a super dark green. So I'm gonna put 300 stitches in in that, and I'm gonna do another 300 stitches in this gray, and there's some other gray as well that I can pick up if I need to, but we'll start with that. So I will be working on this going forward for 
I can't even remember what the prompts are. Doesn't matter. I'll be working on this for some extra credit. So here is where it is currently. Um, and this is one of my Stitch 9 challenge projects. And my goal was to finish these two blocks this year. So I know I'll be able to finish this one for sure. And then I'm hoping if I focus on the extra credit enough, I can get the, that block done. That one's one of the easier ones because it's basically words and then just the trees. It's not as um, intense a stitch as some of the others like that are basically full coverage. So you guys will see that one again. Um, I love the fact that I, you know, I hadn't touched that this project in a year and now it's been out and I've worked on it several times and it's at least getting some stitches put in it and that all makes me very happy. Next up, let's talk about Stargazer. Now, I just started her for this rotation Friday night. And Friday night was a get your head screwed on correctly kind of evening because the last time I worked on this was back in February. And it was the weekend that I had my IV treatment that I get. And I know that I am a complete nutcase that weekend because I have to take a lot of Benadryl and it's probably not the smartest time to work on stuff and so I dutifully put quite a few stitches in it and was all happy and whatever and about a week later I literally woke up at two o'clock in the morning thinking you're off somewhere I have no idea why my brain thought that but it apparently subconsciously did so I wanted to check and see where I was and make sure there weren't any issues before I just forged on ahead. So I was off. And where I was off was right here in the front. So it wasn't as bad as it could have been. I wound up having to frog some stitches that were here in this very light color. Um, but I did that and then I have gotten started on it and have put some more stitches in and I have started working on the beads. Because what I found was for me, the beads are a really great like placeholder, if you will. So one of the things that, there was a place that I thought I actually had miscounted up in here and I hadn't. The issue was that I was missing stitches and I had left space for the beads. So the places I had left for the stitches were correct, but I was, I was very confused about how this was happening. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put some beads in. So once I did that, and because of how I'm highlighting them on my the PDF that I created, I so I took a photo of the chart, and then I created a PDF from it, and so I'm actually using that to highlight, which is perfect, fantastic, amazing. The easiest, much easier than trying to deal with paper copies for me at this point. So what I'm doing is I'm highlighting the beads in uh, pink and I'm highlighting new stitches in the regular DMC in uh, green so that I can tell the difference and it really stands out on the pattern. I mean, I know you can do this with highlighter markers. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying for me, this was easier. So I'm basically down to here. I think I have two stitches right there that will be the color that I have to work in here. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna tackle after I'm done recording. So um, I have not started any of the beads that are like in the sky. I've just started the ones on her dress. I will leave the ones in the sky till the end when I get everything finished. So my current plan is to work on her through the beginning of the week. And what I wanna do is I basically wanna fill in this section here. Like I have checked this and I know that this streamer of her um, bow, yes, her, the ribbon bow, I know that this kind of center line on her dress is correct and everything around it is correct. So what I wanna do is basically bring this down as far as the bottom of her dress because what that will then allow me to do is to basically fill in from there over, it'll be this section right here. And I feel like once I get that done, 
then I can concentrate on this back section, which yes, is monstrously huge. <laughs> so uh, that's the current plan for her. Um, she is also one of my Stitch 9 projects, so my, I am working on her every month, and I'm, I already know I'm not gonna get as much done on her right now as I would like to, but I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I'm really, really enjoying working on her. Um, I sat outside yesterday and sat in the sun and I worked on putting some of these beads in. They're so pretty. So pretty. Yeah, loving it. So there's three kinds here. There's the um, kind of iridescent metallic ones. There's these which are actually like a really pale lavender, I think. Maybe even pink. And then these kind of matte pearl ones and those go in all this space that you see there. So yes, really, really loving working on her. I love it on this fabric. It just makes me happy. So um, yeah, so that'll be out today and then whatever I get done on it, probably Monday and Tuesday, because um, I'm out of town again next weekend. Um, I did want to mention the fact that when I got ready to start the beads, I was gonna go, I, well, I went through my little box where I have all kinds of like random notions in it thinking I had a little container of the Nemo or Nimo thread um, I could not find it so instead I pulled this out which was actually a product that I got in Stitchy, uh, Stitchy Box subscription from last year um, is that correct? no it, I did not actually I ordered this on my own because it's from Fire Mountain Gems um, so this is a two-ply wax nylon. It is a beading thread. It's their color light gray. It's size A, so I think it's the smallest that they carry. Um, I absolutely love this. I'm going to go and buy other colors in it, like some other neutrals, and this is all I'm gonna use for the rest of my life because while it's nylon, it is not slippery. Like it doesn't pull through your needle. It actually stays in your needle, but it's um, as thin as the Nymo is. So it pulls right through even the smallest beads with no problems. Um, it doesn't knot. You know, sometimes the nylon stuff like gets those little kind of almost bends that crinkle and then catch on themselves. Um, and it was not very expensive. I can't remember what it was because it was a while ago, but I ordered it with some other beads that I got for a knitting project. Um, yeah, so I'll put a link to Fire Mountain Gems down below, but yeah silamide so new favorite thing all right and then the final project I'm going to share with you guys is my pins and needles project this is by Annie Bees as well that she's the gal who designed the ornaments I am so close on this <laughs> this is a this is a goal to try to finish up in the next week um, I have so I finished this down here I finished the house the original pattern calls for the little mortar between the bricks to be done in this hot pink uh, and I tried it and I hated it I actually like it in that kind of neutral color that is the background because I think that's what it looks like in real life so I'm leaving it I'm actually not going to stitch the mortar I think it's much more subtle that way um, so I am done this border except for there's little pink flowers at the top of each of those so I'm gonna put those in now this side I actually have to rip back to here I don't know if you can see but there's only one stitch here I don't know what I did but there needs to be three so I need to take this back up to here and then restitch it so um, and then pink flowers so once I do that this will be done which I'm very happy about um, I love this little pattern. I think it's super cute. Like I've said before, I love this border, this border right here. I would be happy to use in another project to be, to be honest. Um, I just have really struggled with the one over one on 28 count. So yeah, but it will be done. It will be finished. Um, and then my plan is to make it into basically a little cushion I think I even have some fabric that I'm I can use for it so um, this is the project that I'm working on for the stitch nanigans retreat um, giveaway or swap whatever you want to call it 
Um, I've got a couple little things I'm going to put in with it for my gift. You all will know how long it took me to do this, so I hope whoever gets it is appreciative of it. Um, I think it's easy to be appreciative of a handcraft if you are a handcrafter because, you know, you know how much work and time and ripping and, un and redoing went into it. Um, but anyway, so I'm hoping to have this as a finish next time I talk to you guys. Um, I am going to the Stitch Nanigans retreat in April. I think it's the second weekend in April, um, which I'm really looking forward to. And that is less than a month away now. So that's very exciting. Um, I think that's all I have to talk to you guys about today. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to be back in two weeks, I think. I think that will work out. Yes, should, maybe. I think it should work out. Um, if not, I will try to be close to that two week mark so I can talk to you guys again about all of the good stuff. Um, again, if you have any questions, comments, whatever's, please leave them below. I'm always happy to respond to those. Thank you again to everybody who watches and thumbs up and favorites and subscribes. I really do appreciate each and every one of you, um, and appreciate the fact that, um, you have chosen to spend some time with me today. So I hope things are all well in your corner of the world. Um, again, please just remember to be kind, be nice to other people. This world can all use a little bit more of that at this point, I think. So y'all take care. I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.